Every pregnancy needs utmost care and attention. But certain pregnancies need a little extra attention. An RH negative mother carrying an RH positive baby is at increased risk of complications. PSV is at the forefront to ensure safe delivery in every RH negative pregnancy. Welcome Julia Dane to this show The Outside View. Uh today first up we will discuss about the Australian women's cricket team. 33 games, 33 won, only lost to since the last time the World Cup took place. Julia first to you, was that 2017 semi-final exit that necessary trigger that Australian women's cricket team needed? Yeah, I think the uh, the team in 2017 really needed to evolve. They had Matthew Mott who was a, a new coach. They had quite a Uh, had a lot of male coaching staff and I think they probably got their tactics a little wrong. They haven't really maybe done enough research in the in the women's game itself to to actually adapt their game and I think since then they've done a, an amazing job. Uh Shelly Mitchkey's come on board as well. I think she's made a huge difference with her input from all of her experiences, but I think also that um you know they they have from those losses you really sort of get that smarts and the hurts and you, and you can really review your games a lot more from losses than you can from your wins. Um at the moment though they're reviewing wins as well uh just making sure that they're just trying to stay ahead of the game and uh to me they they they're looking pretty formidable. Then you have played a lot against them what has changed since 2017? Yeah look guys I like yeah, I was a bit shocked with the the 31 wins of the 33 that's that's pretty impressive and I you know I've said that they they've set the standard as I guess a, a, a women's cricket team and um yeah look they They just got all bases covered, you know. I always speak about uh, the depth they have within their bowling and their batting. So, um I I I don't know the ins and outs like Julia do, but um obviously very surprised in 2017 when they when they lost because they were obviously the firm favorites, but uh um yeah, the, the way they came back and as Julia mentioned, the 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 way the team evolved, um you know, it's been good to see. Not always good to play against them, but um as I mentioned, they've set the the standard. They, they just uh, generally it's called that England is the second best team in women's cricket. Australia come on back of that Ashes and it was nearly a clean sweep. Do they have that blueprint ready for that victory? Uh, well, I'm yeah. technically going to pull you on that one. South Africa is about at rank number two, so I'm on your on your side there, Dana. <laughs> England. <laughs> number two. Um, yeah, I absolutely think that the it'll give them a lot of confidence after that uh, the Ashes win, definitely. Um, that that's what they're sort of working towards they've got to play around a little bit with the, their squad they've got some really good reserves sitting on the sidelines as well so it looks tough for other teams but i think we've also noted that a few of the other teams are doing similar things everyone's had really good series leading into this just to see where they're at and you know trial a few different combinations out whether it's with their opening bowlers or opening bats or different players coming in to see how they fit and get that formula right but i mean it would appear at the moment um particularly in the 50 over game it's it's generally you know it's a it's a harder game to sort of wing a win they sort of you've got to make sure you know what you're doing in most of the games t20 in shorter formats you know it sort of can open up and be anyone's games but i think the the 50 over game for australia's been pretty strong uh in the last few years and obviously that 31 wins out of 33 games is pretty good dane uh, extras and late collapses has been recently what has been pay, uh, has been the pain point for australia do you think that is going to cost them an opportunity maybe in the semis or the finals I don't think I don't think it'll cost them anything. I think um as I mentioned they've got all bases covered. Yes, collapses. Um you would say that they might rely on one or two uh, really good batters in their captain Meg Lanning and uh, you know Mooney Mooney's been incredible for them. Almost an unsung hero in my opinion uh, within that setup. So um no, I don't think so. Again, they've got their bases covered. They've got a good um momentum coming into the World Cup, especially uh beating England very convincingly. I watched uh, most of the games and uh, yeah it was just interesting to see it also there was a massive gap between the two teams and as i mentioned with with australia coming into a world cup after a very successful series like that i don't think uh, i don't think they you would think about australia think about collapses and all those things you you, you want to put them under pressure early any team wants to um and we've seen a little bit if you put a very like quality side like australia under pressure you might find them one thing but again they they have set the the standard the last point in this big picture julia i want to throw it to you 
Meg Lanin has already got enough number of T20 World Cup trophies. Is this going to is this World Cup the 50 over one going to define Meg Lanin's legacy as captain? Yeah, I think it's probably not a bad call. The fact that they only come around every sort of four years, they make them very very special. Um, so yeah, I know that she certainly wants to to make a big impact. Um, with this one, the disappointment of the 2017 is still stinging. I, I recall that myself from losing the the 2000 World Cup in New Zealand, and it it stays with you for quite a while. Um, so yeah, I absolutely think that I think she's been leading up to this. Obviously, she had a bit of a shoulder injury as well during that World Cup in 2017. Um, but I think that that she's been building into this, um, really working hard, pushing and challenging uh, a lot of the other countries, and and making sure that. That, that we are winning convincingly and not just uh, just sort of get falling over the line all the time. They've been preparing for this for since that 2017 loss in the semi-final. 2017 loss is going to uh, be that changing factor, hopefully for Meg Lanin and Australia as well. Let's move on to that squad. Um, 15 plus two, 17 member squad is what Australia have announced. Uh, let me come down to the first question: Have Australia opted for balance and depth over the entire uh, all-round brilliance? Danny, to you. Yeah, I've, well, I've got the squad in front of me, and I just had a look, and I I wrote down the like how many batters, and the thing that stood out to me with the within the side is how many all-rounders they have. Um, whether it's batting all-rounders or bowling all-rounders, that's the impressive part. Um, I'm a big believer in all-rounders, so um, you know, just off the top of my head, I I counted one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven all-rounders within their side, and that means they've got their bases covered. As I as I mentioned, either batting all-rounder or bowling all-rounder, and then they've got their their captain Meg Lanning. She's incredible. So it's as I meant, it's just it, it looks like a well-balanced side. The thing I love to see within their side, and I said it, um, I, I said it to Marizan a while back, is to see um, Alana King and Amanda Jade Wellington within that side. I think. That's a game changer, in my opinion, as a captain. Two quality leg spinners, attacking leg spinners. I would bowl them 20 overs in tandem all day, every day. <laughs> you might be a little biased with your. Uh, you might be a little biased with your own leg spin there, Dana. You're hanging out together, <laughs> you're sticking together. <laughs> no, I have to. It's a leg spinners thing, but uh, no, I'm excited to see them. I, I hope they play together. Honestly, I do. Uh, a leg spinning uh, all rounder herself is calling for two leg spinners to play in tandem. Meg Lanning, go for it! You will not regret this particular thing. Let's come down to that middle order. Uh, we've we've seen that in the India series that Australia had, the top four did not really play great. Uh, Healy, Lanning, Perry, Haynes, Haynes, Haynes was still better. Uh, but if you see. Uh, it was the middle order that kind of helped Australia build that entire thing, especially Mooney and Magra, and then Gardner to follow. Julia, how important is this middle order going to play? Generally, yeah. we don't get a chance, but this time around, they may potentially get that chance. Yeah, I think they've actually got a little bit of flexibility in their order as well. Obviously, we saw um, you know Beth Mooney has been injured, but you know she can open the batting, she can come in the middle order and strengthen it there. Rachel Haynes can they can interchange as well. So I think the flexibility in their order um, just helps strengthen and allows that top order to really attack. The good thing about the Australian team is that they their strike rates are so much higher than everyone else. They attack, they attack, they attack, and they're actually you know nearly pushing at that sort of 80 to 90 strike rate in a 50 over game. Which obviously is a little higher risk, but the fact that they can rely on those uh, middle order in your garden and McGraws and Moonies if she's there or Haynes, um, you know, I think that allows them to really bat deep and to to try and post some really big scores. But again, from that point of view itself, uh, if you just see the squad, there are only four genuine batters. Danny, do you feel that's going to affect Australia late in the tournament? Because having more all rounders, basically, they are on the field for 100 overs. Do you feel that's going to affect Australia late in the tournament? Um, I don't. I'm going to be flat out honest. I don't. Um, you know, we've mentioned McGraw, how she's come into her own, um, just as a as a player within the the Australian setup, and um, you know, taking games away single handedly. Beth Mooney, um, yeah, she's she's one of their batters. I mean, it's Meg Lanning, Rachel Haynes, um, Healy, and Mooney. Mooney that I've got. Yeah, that's that's as you mentioned the batters and. It's it's batters that's been contributing for their for their team for a very long time and a consistent period and 
um, as Julia mentioned, the the engine room, the the middle the middle order is is key for them. So they are pushing the envelope. I don't think it's going to affect them whatsoever. Um, as I mentioned, I think teams should, should just try and put their batting lineup under pressure. As Julia mentioned, with their strike rates and stuff, you know they want to push the envelope. Is how are you going to get those strike rates down? Are you going to limit them to maybe scoring at a 60, 65, um, getting them out of their comfort zone and, and putting them under pressure because. As Gila mentioned, they they bullied sides as a batting unit uh, for for quite a quite a time, you know, and and it's going to be interesting to see when a quality bowling lineup comes up um, against a quality batting lineup. A quality bowling lineup coming up to a quality batting lineup. Hashtag South Africa. <laughs> and that's a good point, though. But I think at the same time, I think there's a there's a reluctance sometimes for some teams to be attacking, you know, having two slips and a gully in or even more potentially. And I think that's. That's what's going to put the pressure on Australia, so they don't get away with. If they happen to get an edge, you've got to be able to take that that uh, chance when you take it. So I, I, I would hope to see some really attacking fields uh, from from uh, the opposition when they're playing Australia. Let's 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 see that, and that's the only way to stop Australia. I feel. Uh, but but the toughest question in the Australia preview is this, and this is to both of you. I'll start with Julia. What is that weak link, or what are the weak links in the Australian team? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, well, I suppose the fact that they lost Taylor Vlamic, um, and they've also got a little bit of, um, which is our, one of the, the pace bowlers. Obviously, Darcy Brown's fantastic, but still very young. They're bringing in uh, Alana King, excellent leg spinner, quite young and inexperienced. And Amanda Jade Wellington's been out of the system for a fair while. Excellent leg spinner, experienced at the domestic level and has played a little bit at the Australian level. Um, so, if anything, they, they have got a, a lot of young, inexperienced bowlers in their in their lineup. And that's where Megan Shoot and Elise Perry, those guys have to sort of step up. McGrath's obviously been around a little bit, but her workloads are, are improving. They're going to really sort of lean on her a bit. Um, Ash Gardner with her off spin is still developing. So, I, I still think they're in their bowling attack. There are a few little weak links, and I think that's why they, they tend to bat really deep and sort of bat people out of a game to just give a little bit of uh, room for their for their bowlers to be able to to attack and um, maybe give away a few a few um, balls here and there, a few boundaries, a few extras, that sort of thing. But I think their batting is definitely the key for Australia. Batting is definitely key and bowling is probably the weak link because of the experience. Tane, as a captain, you might have thought a lot of these things uh, that what's the weak link in Australia. Today, we want to hear it from you. I have to agree with Julia. That's a that's a good point. It's just the experience, and um, we have in the past, you know, felt like maybe Australia's bowling is found wanting because maybe they have relied on the the Megan shoots and the the Lee Sperry's. And let's be honest, Perry hasn't gone as well as she wanted to in the recent past. And as I mentioned, they've relied on her massively. I mean, she's a legend of the game. But uh, yeah. I think the inexperience comes in and, and as a captain, I would think that it, it's almost like a battle of the batters when you play against them. Um, you know, if you can try and get on top of their bowling and, and I mentioned pressure a lot because that's one thing when we speak about Australia, we speak about pressure because it's not a team that, that finds themselves under pressure quite often. Um, you know, so so for me as a captain, I would want to see where can we put them under pressure, whether it's their batting or their bowling. In, in the past, us, South Africa has put them under pressure quite early when it comes to their batting. We, we would take a couple of wickets. What they've done well was they would push Meg Lanning down the order, funny enough. And it frustrated me because, you know, we wanted her early in with a new ball because um, we felt like that's our best chance. But again, tactically, they kind of out, outsmarted, um, you know, some teams. And you would think, when comes when, when does Meg Lanning come in? Um, stuff like that. So I think just for me, it's the word pressure, if you put a, a strong Australian team under pressure, whether it's their batting or their bowling, might find a bit of a crack and you can get in and, and maybe beat them and, and, and put them under pressure early in the tournament. Put them under pressure is what Danny Van Nikkel's mantra for all the other teams is. So that Australia is beatable. That's that's probably the word that I want to use. And, and yes, uh, coming to Julia, that my next question was actually the same. Talia Magra, Annabelle Sutherland have not played in New Zealand. That youth and experience kind of a funda is probably going to uh, be the weakling and that's what Julia has already added. In in those 33 wins, the stats people say me that 
26 wins have come in a row have they been tested enough through that period or was it just like a ride for them yeah it's a good point they they probably played a few of the the bottom end countries uh, no offense to them but in that sort of lower in the tens as opposed to they played south africa or england you know that definitely would have been a lot more challenging for them they they did play sri lanka and uh, i think Ireland was in that as well and a few of the lower countries but at the same time um i think they are aware of that and they still challenge themselves to tick off uh, key kpis that they want to make sure that they no matter who they're playing they still want to be performing constantly um so yeah so it is it is possible to beat them and um, you know they've lost two games <laughs> and you only have to lose one to be in trouble depending on when that's going to going to going to happen but i i think that um they've just got this hunger um to to constantly prove that they're the best in the world and the, and I think that's that's their vision um and that's what's going to be hard to rattle them a little bit I think um leading in but as Danae said we we've, we've got to take it up to them there's no point just sitting back and thinking it's going to happen you've got to be you've got to really take it up to them and and challenge them early and and put them on the back foot and get those early wickets and then they then they potentially is that little bit of a, a weakness and and maybe a little bit of doubt may slip in but it's a pretty um it's a pretty strong group i have to admit pretty strong group have to admit but they're missing two key people they're missing sophie molnu they're missing uh, george wareham uh, since 2018 world cup both these people were specifically groomed for this particular world cup tani uh, amanda jade wellington comes in as a replacement for wareham maybe king comes in as a replacement for uh, molnu and that to just ahead of the tournament not a lot of experience but how much is australia going to miss this two spin spin people As you mentioned that they they've come a long way within the side and um I'm I'm not going to take away from Alana King and and Wellington I think they're suitable um you know replacements if if we have to call them that um you know I think it it's two players that should be in that side but because Australia is so strong it, it's difficult to get them in um as we come back to to Molyneux and Wareham yeah they're going to miss them because they can bat as well even though they're not in the top order they're probably middle low order they can bat as well and um what i love about molyneux is when she comes in she almost does a she she just stops the game when she bowls she just stops it uh, you know she she gets the run rate from 6 it comes down to to 3 immediately she's she's so consistent and yeah they're going to miss them but as we mentioned they've got a very strong side and i think they've got all bases covered um you know unlucky i'm a big wareham fan again leg spinner big wareham fan i think she she's a she's a talent and somebody i'm looking forward to see grow within that setup um you know she she gives it a good grip and she she gives it a good tonk as well she hits a long ball i would know um so yeah they are going to miss them but i think they've got their bases covered and um it's almost you know i'm injured now so it's almost like that was kind of elona king and 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 elona king and um a manager at Wellington's I guess they needed that to get into the side and and, and show their quality as well so um you know it's unfortunate but it's also a good opportunity for for these two legs to come in and and maybe make a difference as i mentioned I'll bowl them 20 in tandem any day you also got to remember they've still got Jess Johnson as well who's ranked number 1 and we haven't even mentioned her yet so you know she's going to really have to step up she got challenged a fair bit by England in the recent Ashes um series which you know got hit back over her head quite a few times and didn't really cope with it as well as she would have liked came on back at the end of the innings and, and sort of cleaned up a bit and got some confidence back but she'll have to really step up um you know to to because obviously Sophie Molyneux is a left arm orthodox as well and um you know it's it's good to, it's very handy to have bowlers bring it into a, the right handed and and, and taking it away so number one bowler in the world in ODI cricket so I'm sure she'll have a bit to um to do in this uh, tournament and she's really and she's making a comeback there <laughs> next up uh the big question rather uh, about Ellis Perry recently dropped from the T20 setup uh, still still their number one um, still number one in the ICC or all rounder ODI rankings how important this particular tournament is going to be Ellis Perry the all rounder in ODI cricket Julia you first yeah she's going to be very important as i mentioned before Taylor Vlamink out we need another pace bowler um the drop in of her in the T20 actually i think all the other countries should be hating on our selectors because i think it's really put the put a fire in a um to come and prove that she's not finished which she certainly isn't her idea of her idea form 
and the way that she bowled in the test series against uh, England really got her back into a really nice rhythm. She bowled some really great back of a length um, bowling, which I think in New Zealand will be extremely handy. Um, you know, a little slightly slower and lower pitches. Uh, I think Wellington's a little quicker than the others, but I think generally she needs to step up to sort of complement Darcy Brown and be that other pace bowling option with obviously Tavi McGrath around a similar sort of pace as well. With a batting, I mean, she's still ranked in the top 10. Uh, we've got, Australia got four batters in the top 10 for the, for the rankings. And so to me, she's there again to, we know how solid she can be. The team can bat around her. Again, I think she wants to prove that she is, is far from finished. And um, and I think the other the other batters having someone like Elise Perry or even a Beth Mooney, even though her strike rates are fantastic. Those two batters, the rest of the team can really bat around them and accelerate constantly uh, and use them as sort of their, their base. Um, so to me, I think she's a vital cog in the, the machine that is Australia at the moment. If, if they want to win, they, they absolutely need someone like Elise Perry in there. Danny, you've played a lot, a lot with Ellis Perry for Sydney Sixers. Um, the ODI player Ellis Perry, okay, T20s, let's leave it for, for the time being. The ODI player Ellis Perry, the all-rounder, we want to know from you. Yeah, look, um, Julia actually hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, at first and I've seen the the work ethic of of Ellis. She she works ridiculously hard, and um, you know the fact that she got dropped and um, you know. First, and I would know that she she would want to prove that she's not done, and she certainly is not. Um, you know the way she came back, the way she she bowled again in the Test series just showed you got back into rhythm. Um, yeah, it, it's it's good to see, and it's good for the women's game as well. I mean, she's again set the standard when it comes to all rounders, base bowling, all rounders for for a lot of females in in the world, not just in Australia. So, um, yeah, I just think um, yeah, Julia mentioned that. Australia needs to bat around and I think she needs to allow herself to, to do that. You know, I think it's easy to put yourself under pressure and you want to prove that I can bat and I can strike at 100. But that's probably not her game. She can because we've seen it in T20 cricket, how she can make up. But it's just about allowing herself to be herself still. Um, you know, Elise Perry does not need to involve with with cricket because Elise Perry has been there all the time. It's just about herself allowing her to be, um, you know, the authentic Elise Perry and, and take her time to bat because that's what made her successful. I mean, we played them in Australia in 2016 and she took her time, but she scored plenty and plenty of runs because she was just authentically herself. And um, yeah, it, it, it'll be good to see um, how she's going to go about it. But having Elise Perry in your side is a stronger Australia side than not having Elise Perry at all because it just brings another confidence. I mean, Put it in in South African setup. You know, if you don't have a Marazan Cup or a Zali, no matter if they're scoring or not, no matter if they're performing or not, it is it's vital to have them there because it just gives that confidence within the setup, and and that's what Elise Berry brings. Her name her name speaks for itself. The name speaks for itself. Uh, now and now it's time for some predictions. Um, where do you see Australia finish? Realistically, where do you see Australia finish? Danny, first you. <laughs> um, you would say realistically they are the best side in the world and the expectation is for them to win this World Cup. Um, you know, my prediction is they would have to, they will definitely probably end up in the top four. Um, you know, it's hard to, to be neutral. <laughs> that's a very easy answer to finish in the top four. I would want, where do they exactly finish in that top four? Where do they exactly finish in the top four? The <laughs> tournament that they finish? Expectation is for them to win, but South Africa is going to win. They'll, fi they'll find them in the final. They'll find they'll be in them the in the final. <laughs> Danny says they're going to be finalists, but they're not going to win this this time. Julia, what's what's your prediction for Australia? Well, I'm going to do the obvious complete flip on that. And I would say, actually, I think they will play South Africa uh, in the final, but I think Australia will, will win. Uh, oh, this, is, this is a very early prediction that it's Australia-South Africa final. Danny says South Africa is winning. Julia says Australia is winning. Probably the two best pace bowling attacks that we have uh, are is something that we're going to see in the final. I want to also ask you guys, what's your first eleven for Australia? Julia, you if if you have some first eleven for Australia. Sure. Um, well, I, I think to me, I would have Beth Mooney and Healy opening with um, Lanning three, Pez four. Um, probably Haynes, depending on the situation, Haynes, McGrath, maybe that left right, just sort of switch it around a little bit. Um, 
Ash Gardner is an interesting one. I think she's really starting to um, work well in her role. She's been dropped further down the order. So I think it's been good for her because we know how hard she can hit it, clean hitter of the game ball, and really brings home really good in that sort of last 10 overs in a 50 over game. Bowling, I nearly want to put both uh, uh, leg spinners in. I'm a bit like you, Dana. I love the fact that they've gone bold. And I don't know why you can have two off spinners, but no one ever seems to want to have two leg spinners. I don't know how many I've got now. Two leg is definitely Darcy Brown. I love Darcy Brown. Uh, I did say Tally McGrath in there. Is that 11 or 12? I think I've so, said. So, so you have come down till 10. And I'm assuming 11 is Megan Shoot. Uh, yes, I would say it probably is Megan Shoot. And see, then we've got Jess Johnson. Megan Shute, like it's tough. It's number one bowler in the world against number three bowler in the world. And, and to me, it potentially is one of those two may miss out. So in fact, the first the first game, it might be one of the leg spinners that misses out. Jess Johnson plays the first game. Um, and then they sort of rotate it a little bit from there, I think. So who do you, think you, who, need to get who do you see in the first game? King versus Wellington. King versus Wellington. Um, King. King. So Alana King, who recently made her debut in Australian cricket, plays that first 11. That's that's Julia Price 11 for Australia in the first game. Dane, what's your 11? Do you have any changes? Yeah, I'm gonna, I actually am going to agree with Julia on the, the the opening pair. I think Mooney, again, has been an unsung hero um, you know, for Australia. Uh, I would type, put her up the top. I think she's quality. She's shown it how many times. Um, yeah, Rachel Haynes thinks she's, she's great in the middle order. She's very versatile as a, as a batter. and. Um, I would put her in the middle order and it's, it's difficult because as I wrote down the 11, I can't get the two leggies in even if I want to. So it is it is that element of do you pick a Jess Jonathan um, or you go Megan Shoot. I would go Megan Shoot, especially in those conditions. Um, not taking away from Jess, I would still get her in somehow. Um, again, I'll also pick uh, Alana, Alana King uh, ahead of, of uh, Wellington at the moment. But uh, ideally, I would get both in. Darcy Brown is obviously my face bowler, the, you know, opening bowler. And then um, obviously with uh, Elise Berry slotting in at four. Talia McGraw, I think, would be key. And um, as Julia mentioned, Ash Gardner is just finding her feet in that middle order. And, um, you know, she's been taking games away. And I think that is the key for Australia is having somebody that strikes the ball so well in that middle order that can actually take the game away. People get so, so uh, stuck with Ash going up the order, but Bring her, bring her down a bit lower. Ball's not moving as much, um, you know, and and she's destructive as, as any batter in the world. And I think that's where she's found her feet. She's got a bit of freedom, and uh, uh, she's shown that. So um, yeah, I'm I'm very close to to uh, Julia's eleven as well. Is it the same, or there is any change? Because um, I, yeah, I so don't what actually. I know is, like, what I understood is you're putting King, so King is there. Uh, Jess Janassen is there, right? Yeah, well, if I write it down, um, I said I'll go shoot ahead of, of Jonathan. Okay. So shoot, please. But you can still get Jonathan in at eight if you if you want to put her in. So you go. Um, okay, so that's 11. the same 11. So that's the same 11 that Julia has put in. So yeah, both, pretty much. Yes. Yeah, both, yeah. both go in with that same 11. Just to inform both of you, uh, Mooney has not opened when Haynes has been fit in the last two years. Uh, so Haynes generally opens in ODIs and Mooney opens in T20s. But but I'm very surprised to know that both of you would want to see Mooney at the top and Haynes at number five. Uh, let's see what Lanning and Mott put out the first eleven. But that's the first eleven that Julia and Dane would want to see for Australia at the World Cup. Any any final closing thoughts you have? Uh, not not really. I, I just think it's it's going to be one of those um, those tournaments where it's about about trying to get fit in uh, a, a few people here and there and swapping people in and out without obviously impacting your result, just so that people are ready to go. I mean, it's a long tournament. Potentially there may be injuries, so you just make need to make sure that your your team's ready by by giving people opportunities throughout the the tournament. Obviously, we got caught short in. 2000 with that exact um, issue where uh, a lot of us hadn't batted because uh, the top water were doing so well. So it's so important to be able to make sure that people are feeling confident and in coming into it. So I think that's important for all teams is to, yes, you've got to make sure you've got your strongest team on the park, but how can you make sure that the whole team is firing, the whole squad is firing at the same time? Danny, any final thoughts? 
No, Julia hit the nail on the head with that final thought. I definitely can't add anything to that. Difficult to say anything. That's it from the Australia preview. If you have any questions, hit it in the comment section, and we'll take up during the live shows when the matches are going on. Uh, Australia pretty much there. Both of them want to see it in the finals again. South Africa. Let's see where Australia finishes. But that's it here at the outside view for the Australia preview.